Recently, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau left Canada during a combination of a historic federal public worker strike and simultaneous cost of living and crime crisis at home that you're all facing that he caused to visit New York, where he claimed to push for Canada's interests on critical minerals. Now, while he was there, he, he did rightly point out the lower labor standards, the human rights abuses, including child and slave labor, and the greater environmental damage that are involved in the production of critical minerals and rare earth metals, which are key elements like lithium and cobalt in the manufacturing of batteries for electric vehicles, for electronics, for military equipment, for hydrogen fuel storage containers, and for many other uses in other countries, like Beijing's Communist Party regime. And he also rightly pointed out the importance of strengthening domestic supply chains. But back at home, you know what? Canadians are right to point out the glaring disconnect between his words in New York and the actual consequences of his anti-resource and anti-private sector policies on Canadian mining and related manufacturing investors, inventors, workers, entrepreneurs, Indigenous partners and owners, and impacted communities. Now we all know, with some of the largest known critical mineral and rare earth element reserves, and the sixth largest lithium reserves in the world, Canada has an enormous opportunity for our own self-sufficiency and is an obvious solution for the world's needs. But the truth is that after eight years, of liberal imposed uncertainty and constant regulatory changes, Canada produces no lithium exclusively today, except as a byproduct in a 100% owned and operated Chinese Communist Party mine that sends it to China. Now, after years of conservatives calling on the liberals to protect Canadian resource security and sovereignty, they did finally force that same company to divest in a different pre-production Canadian lithium and critical minerals mine just last year. The facts are that today, Australia leads global lithium production and China leads global lithium processing and rare earth element production. But the reality is that Beijing is a major threat to natural resource-based free and democratic economies around the world as it aggressively secures the raw minerals and manufactures 80% of the world's lithium ion batteries for the fuels of the future. They've been doing that for years and this government has known it. Now globally, more than half of estimated lithium resources are in the salt flats of Chile, Argentina and Bolivia, most actually located in the latter. But here's an important point. Because of more investor-friendly policies, Chile and Argentina are ranked first and third, respectively, for proven critical mineral reserves that are actually being recovered. Meanwhile, miners in Canada already face and have to overcome disproportionate competitive challenges for critical mineral development here in Canada, like geology, geography, climate, lack of transportation and power infrastructure in remote mining regions, access to land. And of course, they meet higher standards of environmental stewardship and the indigenous and community engagement that all Canadians expect. These challenges have been overcome by resourceful private sector operations with a decades long track record in Canada of best in class environmental performance, indigenous engagement and employment and regulat regulatory standards. But that's why domestic Canadian policies matter so much to the private sector being able to operate here, given the differences from the other major mining jurisdictions and producing areas around the world. Liberal policies are so uncompetitive that Canada is neither a major lithium producer nor processor, and if you could believe this, is actually a net importer. And where does it come from? Well, 60% of lithium oxide comes from Russia and China. And over 70% of lithium-based batteries come from China 
and the United States. In Canada, the problem is the liberal zone policies. A mine takes 25 years from concept to production here. And you know what? Fewer than half of the Canadian mining applications that have been put forward in the last eight years under these liberals have actually proceeded. So despite several decades of the highest environmental standards and indigenous engagement and employment here at home, the problem is self-imposed. It's onerous, duplicative, liberal red tape. Here's some examples. Canada is the second last in the OECD for construction approvals, and Canada is 64th globally for business permitting. The largest lithium proposal in Canada, James Bay Lithium, spent six years in review with 271 conditions, and who knows if it will actually will, but it's not set to start production until next year. Yet the Liberals announced their mineral and metals plan back in 2019. Then they repackaged it as their critical mineral strategy late last year. They're spending 110 million tax dollars to help navigate the broken regulatory regime that they created. And despite $3.8 billion, billion for roundtables and consultations, today Canada still produces no lithium exclusively, no rare earth elements, and under 5% of key critical minerals globally. Liberal policies keep it in the ground in Canada. Now I know I don't have to tell you that resources and energy security and poverty are the top economic and defense concerns of the free world. Yet here at home, the Liberals, I mean, they've set aggressive targets, timelines, and even criminal penalties for major electrification and electric vehicles, but their own policies keep Canada from being able to own the entire value chain from critical mineral production through manufacturing to meet those targets, while both allies and hostile regimes take increasingly larger shares of production and processing right at home in Canada's backyard. You know what? Canadians should find it totally unacceptable that this Prime Minister can't reconcile the gap between his words in New York and the reality of his track record here at home. The fact is, liberal taxes, policies, and laws block Canadian critical mineral development processing and exports, and let other countries and hostile regimes dominate the global market. Now, it is a travesty and an unimaginable, missed, enormous opportunity that the Liberals block Canada from being able to secure our own self-sufficiency and also supply LNG, liquefied natural gas, to the world. But right now, in real time, they're also letting Canada fall behind on domestic supply and global exports of critical minerals. There's a better way and a plan for hope for the future. A conservative government under Pierre Polyev would cut red tape and costs to bring timelines down and project approvals up and bring home Canadian critical mineral production, processing and supply chains to secure our own energy needs and create the fuels of the future and also to get Canadian resources and technologies out to the world.